Hi, how you going? My name's Steve Barker and I am from I'm Enough Coaching. What I'd like to talk to you today about is how you can master your emotions, how you can recognize them, how you can control them and have effect on them in a positive way. The first thing that I want to do though is to recognize Tony Robbins for his influence and guidance that I've been able to use whilst I've been learning about mastering your emotions and uh, the effect that he has been able to give me um, to be able to empower me to be able to master my emotions and also through other readings and understandings. So what are we going to cover over the next hour, maybe hour and a half? First of all, we're going to learn what an emotion is. What is an emotion? How does it affect us? What's it doing? Why do we have them? Secondly, we're going to discuss the four ways that people deal with their emotions on a day-to-day -day basis. Next, we're going to discuss the six ways that you can master your emotions, what you will need to do to understand them, and how you can control your emotions. Then we're going to go on and talk about the 10 action signals for your emotions. We're going to explain to you what your most common emotions are, the messages behind them, and the solution to using those messages in an empowering way. And then finally, we're going to talk about the 10 powerful emotions, the emotions of power. How are you going to be able to cultivate these emotions from your, and how are you going to be able to grow them and have them serve you in many different ways as you never thought possible? Now, ultimately, the, at the end of this um, webinar, you'll be able to understand your emotions, you'll be able to listen to their messages, you'll be able to take control of them, and you'll be able to act, take action on those messages, how to change your perceptions, your values, your beliefs, your directions, and the tools that you're currently using. These learnings are going to be lifelong learning, so you're actually going to be given information that's going to be able to empower your life forever. It's not just a quick fix. This is something that you can use in any situation over and over and over again. You can share this knowledge and information with your friends. They will notice a change in you. I've had friends who I've told about this, and they've come to me and said, Steve, the changes are amazing, and people are actually starting to notice how I'm behaving. So, you know, what I'm going to impart with you today is lifelong learning. So let me share a little story with you. First of all, a young man called Jimmy. Okay, he's an average sort of guy. He wakes up about 10 past 7 every morning. He has a shave. He has a shower. Um, he grabs a quick cup of coffee on the way out of the door. He hasn't got time for breakfast because he's uh, always running a little bit late. He goes to work. He has a really hard day at work. He comes home. He grabs a cold beer from the fridge dumps himself onto the sofa, enjoys the beer, watches the news from around the world, and waits for his new wife for three years to come home so that they can decide what they're going to have for tea tonight. Is it going to be cold pizza? Is it going to be leftovers from last night? Or are they just going to grab something from the lo local takeaway? His relationship's going okay, I would guess. In the, uh, the passion and the excitement side of things, he's not exactly rocking and rolling. But it's comfortable, if you know what I mean. But one of the things that he's noticed is he's starting to repeat patterns from his first marriage. These patterns are starting to repeat over and over again. He feels like he's stuck in a bit of a rut, but he's not quite sure. He's just living from day to day as things toddle along. Do you know somebody like this? Maybe you do. Maybe you know somebody like this really intimately. Maybe you can really relate to this little story that I've told you. Something that I'm becoming more and more aware of at the moment is people saying to me, yeah, my life's okay. You know, they're just accepting it. They're, they're, they're existing within their life. They're not actually living their life. It's just like, well, you know, that's just how it is. Shit happens. Um, and just like Jimmy, they're not quite emotionally flatlining but they're not far off it you know and they would love to re-empower their life with passion and desire and joy but they're scared they don't know how to they don't know what to do where to go where to get advice from they keep getting these emotions you know and emotions pile up on top of them and they're quite scary things emotions sometimes when we let them become um overpowering and empowering on our lives. So you live in fear of their emotions, they've got no control over them. They just 
have their emotions, and then they try to get rid of them. And they're like, uh, you know, screw it up, throw it in the bin. They try to ignore them. They try to uh, belittle the emotions so that they don't pay any attention to them. Now, some people may say the difference between being stuck in a rut and a grave is only a matter of a few feet. And when you think about it, that's really true. And some people will go to ridiculous lengths to try to avoid their emotions because they perceive their emotions as causing a commotion or a fuss. They don't want to upset loved ones. They don't want to rock the boat. They don't want to discuss their anger or their frustration with uh, the people that really matters. And they'll turn to all sorts of strange things to try to avoid these emotions in these discussions. It may be drugs. It may be gambling. It may be drinking. It may be overeating. And ultimately, these will lead to depression. Because people will try to suppress and subdue these emotions. And eventually these emotions will start to destroy any connection that they have with loved ones and friends, families, relatives and work colleagues. Okay? By ignoring these emotions they'll start to become louder in their heads, they'll start to take over and like I say it'll just start to de you know, destroy relationships and erode their personal confidence and stuff like that. And ultimately that's what they were trying to avoid in the first place, was trying to avoid this upset, this commotion, um, by ignoring their, their emotions. And ultimately, it's going to lead to them destroying those relationships, and nobody wants those. So what I'm going to talk to you first of all about is the four ways that people deal with their emotions. And the first one, like I've just discussed, is avoidance. They think that if they talk about their emotions, people will ignore them. They'll hurt them. They'll belittle their emotions, so they don't want to discuss it. They just say, nah, she'll be right, mate. And they'll just screw them up, throw them in a bin, hoping that they'll go away. They'll avoid going into situations that's going to challenge them. You know, they're going to avoid that conversation. They're going to avoid going for higher jobs, you know, better jobs that they know they're capable of. But they haven't got the confidence anymore because, you know, they don't listen to their emotions and nobody really listens to them. So rather than discuss it and push themselves and maybe get hurt or be rejected, they're not going to do um, that job application that they want to do. Now, dealing with emotions in this way is the ultimate trap. It's a very short term fix. You'll feel better for a smaller part of the time. And then for the rest of the time, these emotions will just keep chunking away at you. Okay, so if you want to feel love and intimacy and connection, then you need to d address your emotions. You need to understand what they are. You need to understand what they're telling you. If you don't, then you're not going to start f feeling love and in intimacy and connection. In actual fact, it's going to get further away from you. You can't avoid feelings. They are ever-present. They're generated by your head, by your mind, by your reaction to what's going on around you. And the more powerful we sorry the more we learn from emotions the more powerful they become okay so if we can understand an emotion and what it's trying to tell us then we can use that as an empowering way forward and we can start to take action and drive those emotions um, to a positive outcome rather than a negative outcome the second way that people deal with emotions is denial quite often people have a disassociation with their feelings They'll say, well, yeah, it don't feel that bad, or, you know, oh, you know, it's all right, I won't worry about it. But what they're really doing is they're stoking an internal fire of how they've been wronged, how they've been taken advantage of. You know, when somebody says, oh, I forgot to do this, and you go, well, that's all right, and you're like, but internally, you're like, for crying out loud, why didn't you tell me I really needed to do that? You know. Or they keep experiencing things, they're working over and over and over. They're putting all the, all the effort in, but everything keeps going to rat shit, and they keep saying to themselves, why does this always happen to me? Have you ever experienced that? I have. I certainly <laughs> recognised it when I started to read and learn about this. So to experience an emotion and ignore it will give you pain. Okay. So if you try to ignore your emotions, they will cause you pain. Understanding emotions, their messages, and how to use those messages is what I'm going to share with you today. The third way that people deal with their emotions is as a competition. Many people will stop fighting their painful emotions, and they will fully indulge themselves within that emotion. They won't learn from the positives, they will wear it as a badge of courage. And they will start competing with people. You know, they'll start talking about how their day at work's been terrible, and then they'll go, 
Mate, you think your day at work's been shit? How about mine? Have you ever been involved in one of those conversations? Have you ever had that conversation with yourself? Again, I know I have. So, it becomes part of their identity. They start to take pride in their emotion and how shit they're feeling. And this is the worst trap that you can fall into. This is where it becomes a, f a, a, f a self-fulfilling prophecy. It takes me a while to get those words out because I get tongue-tied. A self-fulfilling prophecy. In other words, the more they believe it, and the more they feed that feeling, the more it's going to happen. The worse it's going to get. Things are never going to improve with that frame of mind. It's better to see what an emotionally re emotional... It's better to see what an emotion really means and have it serve you as a po positive purpose rather than a negative outcome. So, learning and using your emotions. You can make your emotions work for you. Some things that you can't do with emotions, you can't run from them. They're never going to outrun your emotions. You'll never be able to tune them out. They're never going to go away. You can't trivialize them. You can't say, that ah, oh, that's less than I think it is, it's alright, she'll be right, mate. You can't delude yourself to their meaning, either. And you certainly can't let them run your life. If you let your emotions run your life, then you are giving up on so much. However, if you can flip it around, and you can use your emotions to run your life, then that's going to empower you so much more. Emotions are like a compass. They're messages from your brain. They're telling you what's going on. They're saying something's not quite your, right. Your perception, your actions that you're taking are not quite right. They're not getting you where you need to be. They're not giving you the desired outcomes that you need to have. Okay? Your emotions are like a compass. They give you direction. They tell you how to interpret information, how to see things, how to change things. Okay, imagine if you were going to America from Europe. Okay, you got on board your boat, and you didn't have a compass, and you just knew that America was that way somewhere. And uh, you, you raised your sails, and off you went, letting the tides and the winds blow you wherever they may take you. Eventually, you may not actually get to America, you might end up back in Spain or something. Or you could get to America, but it could take you months and months and months. Okay, but if you had a compass... And you knew that America was over to the east or the northeast, and you set sail. Then you had the winds and the tides, they would still drift and take you in certain places. But you had an overall bearing where you needed to go. You knew that you needed to go east or northeast, and you would hit America. So every time you got delayed or taken on a little bit of a tangent by the winds and the tides, you would be able to get your compass out, point to where you need to go, re steer your ship. And eventually you would get to America. And I reckon that you would get there a lot quicker, with a lot less effort, than you would if you didn't have a compass. Our emotions are deep-rooted. We believe that our emotions can be our enemies. How many times have you thought, Oh, I wish I could stop feeling like this. You know, our emotions are deep-rooted things, and somebody have, some people have fears around them. That our emotions are anchored in our past. That somewhere in our past, somebody's told us how we need to react to these emotions. And that we can't change them. We can't change how we act to these emotion, emotions. You can. You can change anything. You're in charge of your own life. It's your destiny. Okay? So if you don't like the way you react to something, you can change it. All right, just because that's how you were told in the past by somebody that's how that's how you must react. It's absolute bullshit. Okay, you can change. All you have to do is be aware of it. So, you, truth is that you can go from crying to laughing in a heartbeat, just like that. Okay, it's all about mindset. It's all about the physiology of your body. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to run a little exercise with you now. To help you um, realize this. Now, I need you to play at 100% for this exercise. I'm going to ask you to do some silly stuff. All right, it's just fun. All right, there's going to be no malice in it. All right, I'm not asking you to do it to make you look like an idiot. But it's just going to be between you and me. All right, I can't see you at home. 
and if nobody else can see you, then it's just you. But if it's with your family, if your kids are looking at you and going, Jeez, Mum, what are you doing? All right, don't worry about it. I just want you to partake in this exercise because it's really powerful and it help you understand what I'm trying to say. So if you're happy to participate, this is what I want you to do. So first of all, I want you to slump down in a chair. I want you to go, Ugh, really slump, really comfortable. All right, I want you to put your head down. I want you to sort of tense up your shoulders a little bit. I want you to stare at the floor. And while you're staring at the floor, all right, I want you to think about something that you really hate doing, a job that you don't like. You know, could be a, an activity or um, something that you really hate doing. You know. Now think about that activity. I want you to break it down into its component parts. What you're going to do? How's it done? What is it that you don't like about that activity? All right. Keep your eyes down. Keep looking at the floor. I'll talk you through it. All right. Now think about that activity. What else I want you to think about is that I'm going to ask you to do that activity soon. How does that make you feel? You know that you're going to have to do this activity that you really hate very soon. Even more than that, I'm going to tell you, you're going to have to do this for the rest of your life. This one activity that you hate. You're going to have to do it over and over and over again. How are you feeling? Think about your feelings now. How are you feeling? What's your breathing like? If you could associate a colour with this feeling right now, what sort of colour would it be? Is the colour stagnant? Is it staying still? Is it moving? Is it pulsating? What's it doing? What's the colour doing? And where would you feel that colour within your body? Would it be in your heart, in your stomach, in your heart, on your chest, in your legs? Keep your eyes down. Just think about that for a few moments. How are you feeling? What's the words that you're using to describe that feeling right now? Excellent, good. All right, now what I want you to do is to stand up. Okay? I want you to stand up. I want you to push your shoulders back. I want you to have your chest out. I want your eyes to rise slightly up so that you're looking at the ceiling. Okay? I want you to take long, deep breaths. I want you to shake out your shoulders. All right, get rid of that tension from your body. I want you to shake your bum. Go on, shake your bum. Maybe do a twerk. I can't do twerking, so I'm not even going to attempt it. But I want you to have a bit of a shake, a bit of a dance. All right? Shake it all out of your body. What else I want you to think about is something that you really enjoy doing, an activity that you love doing. It could be that you're spending time with the kids. It could be that you're out with your mates. It could be that you're uh, water skiing or, or some sort of activity that you really, really, really get lots of enjoyment from. Now I want you to imagine you've got four helium balloons, okay? Two attached to either corner of your mouth. Two attached to either corner of your eyes, okay? And they're pulling your face up, making you smile, making you feel good, okay? Now thinking about that activity that you love doing, all right? I'm not going to ask you to do it over and over again because then you won't enjoy it. But I'm going to ask you to do even more activities that you enjoy doing. Things that you really love to do. You know, maybe it's going to the beach. Maybe it's just relaxing with a book. Maybe it's going out with your friends. Maybe it's all of those things and you're just going to do them over and over and over again. Okay? How are you feeling now? How is your breathing? Think about the colour. What colour are you associating with this feeling you've got right now? What's the colour doing? Is it still? Is it stagnant? Is it moving? Is it shaking? Is it shimmering? What sort of colour is it? And where can you feel that colour in your body? Where can you physically feel it in your body? Is it in your heart? Is it in your head? Is it in your chest? Is it on your legs? Is it in your stomach? Just think about that, alright? Try to think of those feelings. Excellent. So, you can take a seat now, and thanks very much for joining in. I hope that you can see the difference between the two emotions that you just felt. So let's go back to the first one, where I asked you to slump in, a set in, in, in your chair, to sit down and go, Ugh. 
All right. How was your breathing? Did you notice that you were breathing much more shallower? That you were struggling to get oxygen into your body? Now, oxygen is one of the things that really drives us, really powers our body. Okay, it makes us feel alive. It gives our our muscles energy. It makes our brain spark. It makes us all tick. Okay, so if you haven't really got great posture, you're not going to get great a lot of oxygen into your body, and therefore you're going to become sluggish and uh, and in a bit of a bad place. You're not going to have any energy. How is your mindset? Now, with students that I've done this with before, they've said to me, "Ah, oh, Steve, it was shit. It was horrible." I had one person cry out to me, "Get me out of here! This is horrible. I don't want to be here." All right, they felt disempowered and just horrible. The colours that they were describing were dark colours. And that they were stagnant or just still. They weren't moving. They were maybe pulsating if they were moving at all. Now compare that to when I asked you to stand up. And I asked you to put your shoulders back, your chest out, look up and breathe in. Take deep breaths. How did you feel then? Did you feel that your body was more energised? Did you feel the oxygen reigniting the fire inside your body? The life coming back to you? And then when I asked you to shake off and wiggle your bum a little bit, how did that make you feel? I bet you had a little giggle to yourself. I always do when I do it, and if I want to scratch the record, quite often I will wiggle my bum. And that will change my thought patterns just like that, and things change. How was your mindset? Did you feel relief? Lightness? Did you feel empowered? These are the words that people have used to me before to describe how they felt differently from the first posture. What colours were you associating with it? Were they bright colours? What were the colours doing? Were they dancing? Were they shimmering? Were they shaking? Were they jumping around? I bet they were. I bet it was complete contrast to how you felt in the first posture. And that just goes to show you the power of your mind and the power of your physiology, your actual being, your standing, your structure, how you are, can have such an impact on how you feel on your emotions. In just a minute we went from feeling pretty shit and disempowered all the way up to having a laugh and a giggle and feeling really empowered and full of energy. Just from changing our posture and our mindset. It is absolutely amazing what you can achieve with your body and your mind in just a few moments. Alright? Now emotions are there to tell us messages. We've already discussed this. They're also there to empower you. And if you can understand them, and you can realise what they are and what they're trying to tell you, they can really serve you. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to refer to action, uh, emotions as calls to action. Okay. So emotions are calls to action from your brain. Emotions that you once thought were relatively negative are merely a call of action. They're telling you that something's not quite right. Your perception or your act activity or what it is that you're doing isn't quite getting you where you need to be. And if you suppress these emotions or calls to actions and you drive them out of your life and you screw them up into the little brain and throw them in the bucket, okay, they're not going to go away. You can't do that with emotions. They will only magnify and become more intense. In actual fact, if you start to ignore your emotions, what you're doing is you are squandering one of life's most precious resources. Your own emotions are that resource, and they're from here, from your own head. Powerful stuff, isn't it? So, over the next hour or so, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the six steps to emotional mastery. Okay? These six steps are learning about emotions. Then I'm going to give you 10 action signals from your emotions. So we're going to look at the 10 common emotions that people feel what the message is and what you can do to make those emotions go away or to empower you. Okay, because once you make a change and your brain realizes it, those emotions will move on. They will go away. They will dissolve. And I will, I will also discuss the emotions of power. There are 10 emotions of power that you can use to really drive yourself forward. Okay, to give you great feelings, to really bolster you, to give you even more confidence to achieve the desired outcomes that you want to in your life. 
and ultimately you will have a greater understanding of your emotions and what they mean, what they're really telling you and what you can do to take action on them. And even more than this, you're going to have this knowledge for the rest of your life. This is not just a very quick workshop that can have an impact just for a few days. If you really embrace this, like I've done, then you can really take these emotions, turn them around, be empowered by them, and you can do this on a day-to-day -day basis, in any situation, at any time, and start moving things forward again. And the knock-on impact, because there's a secondary thing to this, it's going to be reflected to your colleagues at work, your family at home, your friends. Okay, And if you can share some of this knowledge with them, imagine the power and the possibilities then. Everybody's going to be empowered. Everybody's going to be moving forward. So that's what I want to share with you in the next session. Okay? So if you want to learn more about emotional mastery, what I'd like you to do is click on the button below that says learn more. Okay, fill in your details and I will share with you all of those things and you'll be amazed at the impact that it has on you. I've certainly been amazed by the impact that it's had on me. It really has given me much more skills, much more depth to my life. I can now recognize my emotions and what they're trying to tell me. And I can also flip things around. So for that moment when I was feeling frustrated with somebody, I can turn that into fascination. And fascination, I can do so much more with fascination than I can do with frustration. And when I've told my friends about this, they too have had the same impact. And they've gone, wow. And they've actually come back to me and said, Steve, it's amazing. I did this, what you told me. And I went home. And life was so much better. Suddenly I had a whole different vision on how to see things, how to perceive things, and how I went about doing things. So please, if you want to learn more, click on the button below. Thanks very much. I'm Steve, and I'm from I'm Enough Coaching. Have a great day.